You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play podcast that's normally Star Wars, but today we're doing something just a little bit different. And you will find out what that is after this vitally important mission briefing from Terran Command. Attention fire team Sabre Harmony. This is Marshal Eustabal Singh briefing you on Operation Tangent Fractal. The Aeonic Primacy have a supply post on the planet of Balamar 6, and from there they are equipping multiple fronts on the push in this sector. Taking out that supply post would severely impact their ability to fight and buy us time to mount a counter-attack. The main problem is the base is defended by an advanced energy shield with extremely accurate IFF technology. Only their vehicles can pass through the shield, and for us to try and bring it down with orbital ordnance would do irreparable damage to the planet. However, we think we've found a solution. We have a contact at one of the docking ports where the supplies come in, who can load your mechs into crates onto the vessel, and smuggle you in via smaller organic produce crates on a separate floor of the ship. The first thing you'll need to do is escape from the crates, board your mechs, and then, when you're through the shield, break out of the supply craft and drop into enemy lines. There are jamming towers around the periphery of the shield as well as shield booster nodes. Drop in and take those out so we can resume communications with you and start moving our capital ships into position. You will then need to fight through the land defences to the primary shield generator node for this sector and destroy that. This will bring down the shield for a short period of time. You will then need to exfiltrate the area while we bombard it from low earth orbit, destroying the rest of the defences and breaking open the supply bunker. We will pick you up as we send in scavenging crews to loot what supplies we can before the primacy of time to respond. Because of the jamming towers and the effect of the shield itself, once you pass through the shield we won't be able to contact you until that jamming tower is down, so it is your first target. Good luck, fire team. We're counting on you. Hello everybody and welcome to episode one of Operation Tangent Fractal a game that will be using the Mecha Hack System by Absolute Tabletop, an OSR game of giant robots punching giant robots and giant monsters, everything my little heart loves most about the genre. My name is Adam and I am your GM for this adventure, and I am joined around the table by some wonderful new voices, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and tell you a bit about who they're playing now. I'm Sammy, pronouns are she, they, and I'm playing Faye Ifidi. And their pronouns are they, them, and they are a bionic. I'm ACJ. I go by he, they pronouns. My character's name is Nox, and she goes by she, they pronouns. Uh, She is a mercenary. I'm Riley. My pronouns are he, they. I'm going to be playing Lucas, a engineer, and uh, his pronouns are he, him. Hi, I'm Chris, or Blamed Cat on the Discord forums. I am playing, well, I go by he, he, them, and then my character is going to be Rook, and he's also he, him, and he's a a pilot vet. We open in space above the war-torn planet of Balamar 6. This used to be a thriving place, but it is clear that the war that is threatening this part of Lodestar Alpha has done serious damage to the population centres. We can see there is a vast complex built among the ruins of what used to be a city, surrounded by a shimmering vast dome of energy, like a huge soap bubble, iridescent and strong. Little bits of rainfall bounce off and run down the outside of the shield as a storm rolls in overhead. And working its way through the storm, we see a huge but incredibly slowly moving cargo transport vessel hovering just enough above the planet's surface to graze the very tops of the ruined skyscrapers. Our camera zooms in through the shields of the ship, through the hull, through the decks, until we find a cargo deck midway through this huge ship. It is dark in here. The lights are dull. Faint pulsing LEDs are along the front of organic produce supply crates, showing that the stasis fields that keep the produce in there fresh and good to eat to be shipped across the entirety of the galaxy are working. But on four of those crates, these LEDs are a lie. There is no stasis field. And the cargo inside is not good to eat, and in fact may be very dangerous indeed for your health if you're a member of the Aeonic Primacy. 
inside these crates all is pitch black apart from the lights being cast in the heads up display of the helmets being worn by our smuggled pilots there is a countdown ticking in one corner showing how long it is until the ship breaks through the energy shield and they can escape and their plan begin a small map is projected in the other corner of their helmet heads up display because what's the point of having a futuristic heads up display if you can't replicate the best the most useful parts of video games a voice comes over your comms Valkyrie your tac ops officer okay you're going to be going through the shield any second now we will be losing communications until you're through and the jamming towers are up I have loaded as much telemetry as I can in your hood good luck there is a crackle as your radio is cut off there is a feeling of static energy that washes over you as the ship breaches the energy bubble the IFF's built into the bridge allowing passage through you feel it wash over you and as it does so you can see the comms signal in your helmet that shows when you are connected the little five bar wi- uh, wi-fi signal cut off suddenly you have close in comms between each other but outside of that you are cut off from the outside world there is a hiss as your storage coffins open and our pilots step out who's first and what do you look like Nox stands and stretches nonchalantly as she looks around the cargo bay, looks over towards our vet and says, Good to see you survive that, old man. Didn't think you'd be able to get your bones going after that. As long as I've got coffee, I'm fine. But unfortunately, we don't have that, so I'm just going to be grumpy, which is probably good for the mission. Rook steps out. He's a very large and grizzled gentleman probably in his 40s and uh he uh you know has five o'clock shadow obviously doesn't need to shave for you know military sake in that regard or if he does probably this morning he's shaved and it's already grown back by now homer simpson syndrome yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> yep but he's got a flat top and uh, right now i guess we're in our regular outfits and whatnot so he's uh yep in his regular flight suit climbing out and getting ready and he looks over to looks over to Lucas. Uh, Lucas is um, just barely not a child. Uh, Nineteen. He has brown hair, which is a bit of a mess. Although you can't see it underneath the, you know, helmet. He's anxiously looking around. Okay. Uh. Now what? <laughs> well, you breathe first. That's the important thing. (laughs) Yeah, we can do that. So this is what active missions are like. Oh boy. Remember that last time we got locked up in one of these? There was a vacuum chamber, so we actually had to keep uh, air tanks on us. This is a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I remember that. Oh, oh, you remember the malfunction that we had right off the bat? That was interesting. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. That usually doesn't happen. You're okay, kid. It's fine. Just, you're good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nox takes her helmet off, revealing her slightly longer than shoulder-length black hair, and she takes a deep breath to show that it's okay, and she looks over at her fourth member. How you doing over there? Imagine needing to breathe. Stupid organics. Uh, so Faye is a bionic. They were once human, technically. Phase from the Aeonic Primacy, but was abandoned on the battlefield and joined the Terrans. So now they are with them. More robot than flesh. So it's kind of like a blank faceplate. And they do have what appears to be cat ears, but they're antennas and nothing else. <laughs> Ask about it. Nice. <laughs> you know, Faye, you still need to be able to technically breathe. I mean, you're at least cells do. Eh, they'll be fine. But glad to see you're not rusting. Mm. If the cells die, I'll replace them. If the parts rust, I'll replace those. Very expensive. So we are starting off this mission using the on-foot rules, just for a bit of a change to shake things up. You do not have access to any of your mecha abilities or any of your modules. What you do have, though, are equivalent weapons and armor to what your mech would be carrying. And they do the same level of damage and so on and so forth. 
any wounds or armor damage that you take until you get in your mechs. Once you're in your mech, you don't need to worry about it because at that point, the first aid kits in your mecha will kick in and patch you up and you'll be starting in your mecha with clean slates as far as armor and wounds go. Assuming, of course, you manage to survive to get into your giant robots. If you have any pilot abilities that would make sense that you can use outside of your mecha, like Reckless Attack or um, similar stuff, then obviously you can. But if your mecha or pilot abilities are very much around rolling reactor dice and that sort of stuff, they obviously won't kick in because you don't have a reactor dice. And that also means that you're limited to one of each action type per round until you're in your mecha. You cannot push yourself enough to attack twice. You just don't have the juice at this moment in time. On your helmet maps, you can see a little blinking light to where your mecha are stored, which is in the lowest possible cargo bay just above the big doors. If you can imagine this as almost like a huge multi-layered torpedo ship with huge multiple rows of double doors along the bottom of the ship where most of the cargo comes in. And from there, various series of lifts and pulleys and belts that check the cargo that comes in by size and moves it around to where it sits within the actual ship itself for optimum storage facility. The Aeonic Primacy relied very, very heavily on drones and AI and droids to do most of their work. They do still have a reasonable amount of human and close enough to human, not yet quite as fully mollified as... mollified? Modified as Fey soldiers and craftspeople so there may well be some living breathing people here on this ship as well but an awful lot of it is automated you can see that where you're aiming to get to is four floors down you know what the great thing about things being like below probably the lowest point that we could possibly be on the ship looks around what's the great thing it's less of a fall uh... <sighs> you know i I, I still say every time we have to deal with these primacy jack wagons, I'm just disappointed in their lack of style. Like, they could at least, like, take pride in their ships, but it's all efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. It's, but it's very predictable, which is useful for us, right? I reckon it's nice for us, but also, let's get on with it then, eh? We gotta get going down. Got no time. Oh, yeah, let's get our gear. Onward and downward. Let's go. They... I need you to be our face this time in case we're in anyone. You're the closest to one of these primacy loons that we got. So you take the lead. I literally don't have a face. It's a blank slate. <laughs> exactly. That's why. Which works great. I love the pre-mission banter. 10-4. I'll lead the way. So Rook is going to grab his warhammer and all his fun stuff. His shield, his little personal shield, all that kind of stuff. Shoulders it up. All right. Lead the way. Yeah, so they will do their best to lead the way, kind of um, fall back on old marching habits, and uh, just kind of walk walk confidently ahead. You make your way across this cargo bay. Because the ship is in flight, most of the internal systems here are dormant in terms of the cargo loading and, and movement and transport stuff. So it's eerily quiet, and yeah, there's... It feels like there should be, you know, vermin in here. This is a place that's absolutely full of food, but there isn't. There's not even, like, techno rats and that sort of stuff around here. It's, it's very sterile. You cross this darkened and quite imposing cargo space, working your way through the narrow corridors until you get to the main door. And opening that and looking out, you can see that there are cameras out here along the main corridor on a, a rotating kind of search pattern. There is also, at the far end of the corridor, that's clearly just finished a circuit heading away from you. You're not yet sure whether it's going to turn round and come back, or whether it's going to go down a different corridor and, and do a square. You can see two hovering security drones. They look a little bit like, for those people who might play Warhammer 40k, kind of the Tau floating sniper drones, in that they are a dome on the top, with two large cameras mounted, and then in between them, instead of a nose, a long laser rifle barrel, and behind that kind of sensor fins and repulsors to hover it off the ground. And they're hovering about four foot off the ground. There's, as I say, there's a pair of them that have just... down the corridor. They're currently uh, heading away from you. Well, I fit right in here. I don't know what the rest of y'all are going to do. Is there any way I can hack into the camera system? Is there a console to hack into the camera system? Yeah. On the downside of the hallway. <laughs> yeah. No, you could try and hack remotely. 
into this camera system, yeah, you're gonna have to get close to it, which means that you either have to go down, like, hug the corridor, or else go back into the cargo room and try and work out where the nearest point on the other side of the wall is. So I'll let you know which of the two of those seems most appealing. I imagine in the cargo room out of the sight of the cameras, but... Yeah. Make me a systems test. All right. Roll a d20, and it has to get under my number. Yep. Well, that's a 10, and my system is 17, so I think I yeah. did good. Yeah, you hack in remotely. You jump on, on the ship's Wi-Fi, <laughs> hack into the camera on the other side, and from here... You can link into this camera and a few in the grids on this floor. Basically, each floor is kind of firewalled off from each other so that one person can't just take over the entire ship's camera supply without Mm. being in a security room. But yeah, you can get into this camera and also the rest of the cameras on this floor. And you can do what you like with them. You can turn them off. You can lock them in position. You can loop some um, footage. I'm going to loop some footage. You can also take a peek through them on your little kind of wrist-mounted computer if you want to have a look what else is going on on this floor. I would probably do that uh, and kind of show it to the the boss. Who's the boss? Knox <laughs> looks over your shoulder, not being the boss at all, but starts poking around at your, your screen and goes, all right then, we got to find the way down and we got to point these up or loop those two going down the hall. Then we got to take those two out, make it down there. Yeah, uh, kind of like click clack sounds uh, or boop boop, depending on the technology we're dealing with, uh, <laughs> whether I have a touch screen or a keyboard. Yeah, and now the cameras are looping, uh, so the the footage is looping the same like you know twenty seconds or whatever. All right, so uh, now all we have to deal with is the actual cards. So you can see before you start looping it as you're kind of doing a quick scan of what, what's going on with the other cameras on this floor. There are four separate patrolling pairs of these floating sentry guns and they appear to be doing a loop around this entire floor. They're not going in any of the rooms, they're just on the actual corridors themselves. Doing some timing, kind of seeing where they appear. You reckon if you're quick, as soon as the next pair kind of goes past, you can get out and scamper to either the stairs or the elevator down. The problem with the elevators down is that they are all separately controlled, so there is a chance that if you're seen in there, they could get locked off. Whereas a stairs is a stairs is a stairs, they can't really turn the stairs off. But Mm -hmm. it might be a little bit tight. I have a question. Speaking of tight, how tall is everyone? (laughs) Like, roughly. Because my character's like six foot five. Oh. A big guy. I'm like five and change. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Six foot even. Probably five and change, you know. A small kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some, some 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 kids are really lanky and tall, though. You this know, is that's true. Lucas is lanky and not quite tall. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, basically you've got... I don't have to, like, peer over anybody's shoulder. I just look down mm-hmm. past both of you. Like, Good job. That works. Okay. Hope I don't have my head on anything this time. Let's just try to make it down to those stairs. I'll take care of anything that gets in our way. Agreed. The less we can uh, trigger now, the more time we have to actually get down there. Otherwise, it'll be a fun little race to do what we got to do. Show us those fancy single file steps there, Faye. (laughs) Let's take the stairs. Stairs. All right. Always a practical way. So presumably we're waiting for the, the loop and the time to scarper down the hall there. And go. Scamper, scamper, scamper. You break out of the room, being as quiet as you can, scoot down the corridor, down through uh, an open doorway into a set of stairs. The stairs have no lights on at all whatsoever, so you're having to rely on kind of the night vision augments in your helmets, really, to see what's going on here. They haven't bothered lighting the stairs because no organic members of the crew should be going down the stairs. (laughs) They are there purely in case there's a problem with the lifts and they need to move some cargo. You manage to get down two full flights of stairs. You are halfway to where your mecha are. When the stairs end and the next lot of stairs is on the other side of the ship. It's not the most efficient way of doing it if you're a person because everything in one place is. But clearly there's some weird internal logic to where the cargo is being stored and where the various movement systems in the ship are being stored that has meant that at this point these stairs end. 
looking out through the doors at the end of the stairs, it opens into a slightly larger room where lots of belts and pulleys and manipulator arms are coming down from the ceiling. They're all currently turned off, but this is clearly one of the cargo sorting sections of the ship. And you can see, kind of looking through the, the windows and the doors, that there are lots of portholes in the walls and the roof where these manipulator arms will take something off a belt and then push it through a hole onto another belt to, to be moved around the ship. There are three people in here. They are human. They are lightly augmented. They are dressed in engineers' overalls. They have got their backs to you and are leaning on a crate that they have clearly repurposed as a coffee and card table. <laughs> and they appear to be playing some form of gambling game. There are big and very dirty mugs of coffee kind of on this table as well that they're occasionally drinking from. As with the security drones, at the moment they haven't seen you, but the way across and then down to the next set of stairs is on the far side of this room. Are there any holes in the floor for the sorting purposes? <laughs> yeah. Rook was thinking the same thing. But yeah, but they're in the room where these three engineers are. Rook, you have the same idea I do, eh? An expeditious ejection of uh, engineer personnel. Lucas, can you use your hacking skills to uh, make something happen on the far side and pop open a hole near us to get down below? I can certainly try. Uh, pop open my wrist cab. So, from where you are at the moment, there is no separate Wi-Fi controls for the the machinery in here. They look like they're all controlled by big terminals in the center of this room. There are possibly a few smaller COM ports that you can plug into and hardwire into, but you'll need to do that from inside this chamber, one way or another. I haven't got range from here, sorry boss. Hmm. Is there anything we can manually espionage in this area? I mean, all these arms and things like that, mechanics, there's gotta be something that you can like overload, cause a problem. If we need a distraction. Though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, there's absolutely stuff you can do, but it all involves you getting into this room <laughs> in point. some way. Now, they have their backs to you, so as long as you're a bit sneaky, you can kind of open the door a little bit and sidle in and then make your way around. But um, A little bit, yes. A little bit, Big, yeah. burly, 300-pound, Ma- six-foot-five guy. <laughs> Let me just get this. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you think thin! But yeah, all of the all of the things that you'll need to do will need to be done from somewhere in this room. Guarantee you face probably so that I'm very inefficient on so many levels. I mean, being primacy myself, I could just go in and berate them for slacking off on duty and try to lead them to the far side of the room. Oh, with your presence of eight. <laughs> if that's what it uses. <laughs> Nox will back you up. I have a presence of 14, so... Yeah, I'm uh, kind of hoping our dear GM will give me advantage for being primacy. <laughs> Absolutely. I was, I was going to say, yeah. While the rest of us sneak up or sneak around or what we need to do. So, do, Are they in the way of us getting to where we need to go? They are. Unless you're really sneaky and kind of really hug the shadows around the edges, you will have to go through them effectively. But yeah, you can certainly try and distract them and send them to the far end of the room and then do something down there or get them looking the wrong way, then jump down a floor port at this side of the room. They are certainly an obstacle that is in your easy route. Okay. So with our people that are going to go up there, just quick question. So the way it's laid out, I'm trying to envision this here, like the area. They've got a little co- they got a little setup so they can do cards. Are our people going to be able to distract them in such a way that keeps them from looking at Lucas and myself as we keep going towards them? Or is it going to be one of those things where you walk up and they're going to turn and look at them and we're behind them in the, you know, the wide shot? You and Lucas can certainly hide in the stairs. Okay. There are places outside the direct entrance of this room where you can be unobtrusive while Faye and Knox go and distract them and take them to the other side of the room. I want to be challenging without being harsh, you know. (laughs) No, you have to kill them. It is the only option. Death to the primacy. (laughs) I mean, that's going to be an option. It's only going to be an option we have later, so. That's my backup plan. I have an axe. (laughs) Yes. So I guess we'll open the door and Faye and whoever is accompanying them will walk over to the card table and just slam a metal hand down on the table, just making a very loud bang and knocking some uh, accoutrement onto the floor. 
I see you're slacking off. Uh, 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 um, no, no, uh, no, of course we're not. Uh, wait a minute. I, I don't recognise you. You're not part of the main crew. Can you make me, then, a presence coax test? Or intrigue, actually. I'll allow intrigue if you have yep. intrigue. Uh, I will give you advantage. This is the first time I've ever been happy to see a natural one. Woohoo! Critical <laughs> success! <laughs> so, yeah, they, they've started to challenge you. What's your rebuttal? You don't recognise me because I just had my face replaced. Oh! 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 And their eyes widen as they realise, like, the level of your augments. And the level of your augments are restricted only to, you know, very senior members of the military or scientific corps. Oh, um, 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 of, of, of course, no, sorry, um, um, we're just on, uh, break, that's all, we're just on, we'll get right back to work, uh, any minute now, um, yeah, um, sorry. And they, they kind of stand, their backs are now to Lucas and Rook, and they're standing kind of at attention, waiting for you to direct them. And I'm part of the inspection crew, that's why you don't recognize me, so we need to go down a floor and go investigate downstairs. Gotta show me what's, what this whole rig is about. Uh, yes, of, 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 of course, of course, of course. While they're talking, uh, one of them hurriedly grabs the uh, the pack of playing cards, shuffles it and jams it in their pocket. And then the three of them start walking across the room, gesturing you to, to follow them. And they're rattling off a list of specs and kind of excuses and, oh, this is what we've been doing and we've upped the efficiency of this hypermatter translocator by 0.7%, meaning it will be like 86% parsecs faster and that sort of incomprehensible and clearly made up techno babble as they're leading you across the across the room Let's see what did that say predictable how many of you are slacking off downstairs at this point oh i, I mean I, I can't swear to the uh, the, the rest of the crew uh, as, as to how many might, might, might be slacking commander um but i'm sure they're all that they're working uh hard and, and diligently down there um do you want me to go first and make sure that they are properly presented for you and are aware of your credentials so that there's no um, confusion about who you two are and, and why you're here. And there's an eager look where he's clearly trying to make sure that his friends don't get a severe, you know, don't get the same telling off. If I was actually a gun primacy, I would just go in and surprise them. But of course, Inspector, let's 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 go. And they walk across the room, they open the doors to the other set of stairs that's leading down, and they start walking down the stairs with you. And it's pitch black in here again? As they come in, one of them fiddles with something on their wrist, and very dull, almost like emergency lights, light up on the stairs. Okay, okay. It's certainly dark enough that you can totally bushwhack them without anybody noticing, if that's the question. But... (laughs) I look over at Faye... And I kind of read your mind because I can't read your facial structure. <laughs> and... Great poker face. When they're looking away, I give the nod and the little slice across the throat, and I look at the stairs. Yeah, just straight up shove them down the stairs. Exactly. Can I get from both of you a power combat test, please? Just to see how quickly and quietly. I suppose it'd also allow a um, mobility stealth I'd allow as well, since it's all about quiet kills. Okay, I rolled a 9 on my 17 power with my combat on foot skills. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to set these dice aside for D&D because that was an 18, so I certainly failed that. Okay, so I think that AC manages to take out two of the three. Uh, however, Sammy, the one that you were going to push down, is maybe noticed at the last thing. So what does this scene look like then, as half of it goes right and a little bit of it goes very, very wrong? I'll start with the correct section of it. <laughs> wow. So, um, as they approach the stairs, the two that are in the front, Knox pulls their broadsword from behind their back and kind of kicks one down the stairs. The other one turns and looks at them surprisedly. I ram the sword through their section and then bring them down to the one that was on already heading down the stairs. And we slide down the stairs as I impale both of them at the second landing down below. You corpse surf down the stairs? Yes, I, I corpse surf down the stairs with two <laughs> bodies on my sword. Quietly. and <laughs> Corpse surfing is a very distracting scene, so Faye hesitates for half a second watching that and giving the last guy just enough time to turn around and realize that they don't have 
any other insignia at all. No, no com or anything. So they realize that Fey is uh, not part of the premise anymore. And they can pull out their their weapon. And the sole surviving engineer sees what's gone on. They begin to react in a very human fashion with kind of shock and panic. And then suddenly it's like a switch gets flipped in their brain and their features go completely expressionless and they hit a button on their wrist and alarms start oh, no. blaring. Rook, Lucas, you have seen the other half of your fire team escorting these engineers out through the door and starting to make their way down the stairs. I imagine at this point you have cautiously mm -hmm. crept into the room, making your way towards one of these computer consoles to start opening a quick route down. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to work. This is They're doing a great job. I've not seen us go through a mission this flawlessly in a long time, and it's really a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and go figure. Yep. Nope. Nope. That just just solidifies. I'm I'm too old for this. Should just get your weapon ready, kid. Let's go. Okay. What do you do? <laughs> I guess we'll get towards the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Rook's initial just thought is well. Criff, they're going to need our help, so <laughs> shield bash ready to go, hammer ready to go, because, you know, we don't want any gunfire going off, because that could ricochet off the walls, so he's going to rush out and just start booking it <laughs> towards the other end. Yeah. <laughs> you two are pelting across this fairly sizable floor. Unless you want to abruptly try to stop the alarm and be like, oh, that was a test. I don't know if we can, but... I could hack it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that's certainly something that Lucas could do uh, while Rook's running across the company aid of, um, you know, the, the rest of the fighting. If you want to do that, well... Would that be system espionage? It will be system espionage, yes. Uh, I just looked up the rules for how the on-foot skills work, and they add yeah. plus two to your number. Um, yeah. My number is already 17. <laughs> nice. And I chose espionage yeah. and intellect. Don't Nice. Don't roll a 20. <laughs> Don't roll 20 and you got it. <laughs> That's a two. Woohoo! Oh, so close to a crit. So the sirens start blaring. Rook runs across this floor. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a scuffle between Nox and Faye and this sole surviving engineer who is moving in a very robotic fashion, pulling out like a, a pair of effectively Stanley knives kind of like engineering tools with fizzing blades and gripping parts. Lucas skids to a halt halfway across the, the floor where there's one of these computer terminals and quickly plugs in, starts working through the security protocols, fingers flashing and the sirens cut off. You can see while you're in there, because you rolled so well, that while you might have managed to turn off the sirens, the wider security alert has gone out and there are troops, um, security droids, that are starting to converge. But by turning it off and effectively sending out a spoof baffle as part, because that's a hell of a problem. Yeah. You have managed, you have bought the fire team a little bit of time, but it is only a little bit of time. We cut back to the stairway. Yeah, in the moment that Nox sees that Faye didn't get the kill, I'm like, I forgot how brutal I was, didn't you? So she pulls out her whip chain and let me know if this is okay. My mech has the grappler ability. Yeah. I would like to use my whip chain to, because I'm on the lower landing from the others, I want to grab up because it's from near to close, so I want to pull them down the stairs backwards away from Faye towards me. Do you know what? While that is technically a mech thing, I will allow that because that is cool as hell. <laughs> you did say we had our weapons, like our mechs. So. Yeah, you have your weapons, so yeah. Make me a power combat test. You got it. That is a 12 on, since I had two apparently, I get seven uh, on 19, 12 on 19. Yeah. What does that look like as you take this engineer out then? It's quick and painless, so I take out the first two. The alarms start going, the alarms cut off. Nox looks up and sees Faye standing there and the other person start fizzing with, with belts and chains and wires and saws. And I just grab my whip off my other hip, lash it out, wrap it around their neck, drag them down the stairs backwards. Kung, 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 nuts, bolt stuff flying everywhere. And I look up at Faye and I say, well, come on then. Nice work. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, the door bursts open behind Faye uh, as Rook kind of charges through shield and warhammer? Yeah, warhammer. In hand. 
And yeah, Lucas, you're currently left alone in this in this room. The lights are all still red, but you're still currently in the computer systems at the moment. There has been a ship-wide lockout go down, but yeah, you have managed to buy a little bit of time to rejoin the team. Yeah, I'm gonna run it, catch up with them. <laughs> Don't forget we have comms, so you could, like, calm us. Yeah. Yes, I. There, there were holes in the floor, right? We could go through the, the holes in the floor. Uh, that might be a solution. Uh, calm, calm the guys. Uh, okay. Uh, we're all in the clear, but not really. Uh, we've got like thirty seconds before they're here. <laughs> if I hadn't done that, it'd be twenty seconds. Let's go. <laughs> Good job. Do these stairs get us down to the floor we want to be on? Yeah, the stairs will get you down to the floor that you want to get to. With the caveat that since there are security patrols looking for you, that's probably going to be where they're looking. The various cargo shunts in this main room will also get you down there, though it might be a bit less comfortable and will require probably another... Actually, you're on 19 for systems. It won't require a further roll from Lucas to get you down there, but it will be a little bit more uncomfortable, but you might be able to get the drop. It's up to you. Nox nabs the wrist computer off of the guy who turned the lights on in the stairs and speaks into comms. Hey, Lucas, I got a new toy for you. And <gasps> runs back up the stairs and kind of drags Faye back into the the storeroom. I figured out it's uh, that hole. <laughs> I keep forgetting you can do that. Okay, good job. The cargo portal in the floor opens up. You can see that there are belts and kind of, again, like mechanical mover arms working down there, waiting for something to go in this hole to be taken to its new location. You drop down onto these belts. Once you're on these belts, it is pitch black. They absolutely haven't bothered with any lighting here, because why would they? It's effectively where the pins and the balls go in a bowling alley. It's all this kind of deep pulley system and, and belt fed and... You know, these mechanical arms pick you up ungently and move you from one belt to another belt before putting you back down again. Mm -hmm. Not enough to hurt, because they clearly have some form of tolerance sensors built into them so they don't crush you. But yeah, you know, you are ignobly grabbed and moved from one belt to another. If any of you have played any of the Horizon games, it's a little bit like some of the, um, the cauldrons. You know, where you've just got these weird alien grabbers that kind of pick up and move stuff around. It's not ignoble. This is how we do it in the Permacy, I swear. <laughs> Everybody moves like this. <laughs> and finally, you pop out on the main cargo floor. This is where the big, bulky cargo is, is stored. So, hover tanks uh, that are being taken in to be deployed. Other enemy mecha that are being taken in to be deployed huge big spare parts prefabricated building sections you know this is this is the bulk deck whereas the rest of the decks you've been on kind of the higher up the ship you get the smaller the things they store presumably there's there's a, a reason for that as you come out here you you emerge about two-thirds of the way across this massive deck and this unlike the previous ones where the rooms were quite self-contained so you'd have a big room and then a break, and then another big room, then a break. This is just one huge deck. You can see these massive crates all over the place. There's multiple kind of locked and closed cargo bay, bomb bay doors almost uh, underneath you. At each of the entrances to where the stairs are, and at each of the elevator entrances, you can see that there are squads of enemy troops waiting with their weapons drawn. Squads of three and four, usually in each squad. I mean, the, the makeup varies a, a little bit from squad to squad, and I'm not going to go too much into it until it becomes hugely relevant. But each squad usually has at least two of the floating sniper sentry drones and at least two augmented primacy soldiers. Oh boy. They are certainly l leaning more on the mech side than the person side. You can't quite work out if they were always robots or if they are just really heavily augmented mm. combat cyborgs again they haven't quite seen you at the moment because all their attention is on the traditional ways to enter this deck but it is going to be a bit of a scamper across to where your mecha are which are in massive crates at the moment as well your mecha are not out there because it's really obvious that they're not aionic primacy mechas i think probably mm. with the exception of um barricade possibly 
Well, then again, for yet, yeah, is Barricade a Terran mech that you've been given, or was it the mech that you, when you defected, you took with you? Half and half. Your phase mech was very badly damaged when they were left, so it is an Aeonic chassis, but the both arms have been replaced are very obviously Terran. Cool. So yeah, even your mech then is very clearly out of place here. So yeah, they are all in big storage crates. Now again, when you get to these storage crates, you can hit the, you know, crate release button that's built into your comm unit in your helmet, which will quick release your mechs for you then to get into. But the second you do that, it is going to be very, very obvious that something is going on here. What's the plan? So you said there were tanks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That sounds like a really good distraction if we can uh, get in one of those and um, maybe shoot the back wall. So these tanks, if you think very separatist from Star Wars, oh. they're really big war machines. Not so much their mechas where you still need that pilot reflex, but an awful lot of their tanks are controlled by AI and computer brains. Mm. So you can get in and you can override them. So Rook picks up um, Lucas and runs over to that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I just under one arm. You know. <laughs> we have a Lucas. Or you can get in and try and you can try and manually use the guns in there. What you can also do though is if you do manage to hack and override them, because of the the way that you are all networked. Lucas, once it's been hacked, could transfer the firing controls to any other of you <laughs> to then use. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, and to remote pilot. So I do have a plan. <laughs> it's a terrible plan. Uh, it's a great plan. It, it's a great plan. <laughs> Liberal interpretation of my skills. Sammy, I know how your plans are, man. <laughs> my plans are impeccable and they work every time. So if the tanks are run by computer brains, one of my pilot abilities is computer brain. <laughs> Mechanically, it just adds to the system and want to mobility. But if the GM is willing to give a rule of cool. Yeah. Careful interpretation. <laughs> yeah. So me in general as a GM always errs on the side of rule of, rule of cool. Me running Mecha Hack very much errs on the side of rule of cool because it's a cinematic high cool game. So yeah. So what what's the what's the thoughts then? get myself into a tank, plug in, and just kind of act as a relay to help Lucas hack in a little bit easier. Ooh. Yeah. I'm absolutely up for that, which will give Lucas an advantage, so roll twice and pick the lowest, because it's reverse D&D, because we're rolling the system. <laughs> I do have a thought about how that might manifest, actually, and the thought I have about how it might manifest is... You literally have a computer brain, mm -hmm. so rather than just setting up a remote relay that you then have to use your actions to control, you could just upload a copy of your brain to this tank. Oh, I love oh it. no! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, leaning into rule of cool properly. I was gonna say that's that's some soma level stuff there, man. That's that's uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Look, when you keep uploading yourself to different bodies, whenever you break one, you get used to it. You it's just fine. reactivate the tank later. <laughs> like, okay, I'm gonna come yep. back. This is old hat. <laughs> The tank will be a recurring character. <laughs> Not if I have anything to say about it. So is this like a copy of your brain? Is it like this ver This body is just going to like conk out when, this when I do this? I need to be prepared. It's a copy, but also still me. Okay. Complicated. It's best not to ask about the complexities of consciousness. And not in the middle of a fire and a mission. Come on, we got to go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm hacking, I'm hacking. Okay, it's going to be systems espionage test with advantage, so don't roll a 19 or a 20 twice. <laughs> uh, that's a four and a six. Yeah. We are in. Okay, so, Faye, Lucas, what does it look like as this happens and you take control of this tank? First step is Faye getting inside the tank and just, like, physically plugging into the back of their head and uh, it's kind of sending the comm relay code to Lucas so they can do do their thing. Visually, it's just a lot of typing. <laughs> he's just got like the most focused look on his face as he's like, can't mess this up, can't mess this up. <laughs> Connecting. Boop, 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 boop. Override in place. Uploading. Boop, 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 boop. 
Upload completed. Would you like to install operating <laughs> system Faye? <laughs> yes! <laughs> XP. Yes. <laughs> Installing. Boop, 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 boop. system doesn't have enough memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loose rate of death. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'll just delete some of my childhood. I don't need that. <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> On that one, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's morbid and awesome. You are now in control of this tech. Dark humor. You know, if you replace your hands with robotic ones, you could probably type faster. <laughs> and then I'll hit the trigger and just kind of shoot the wall behind the groups of guards. <laughs> there is, in such an enclosed space, a deafening boom and you feel the shockwave of this you know anti-mecha tank gun firing and you, you feel it apart from Faye obviously uh, you feel it in your heart you know like that really deep bass boom as this goes off and blows a hole through the hull near where some of these guards are standing guarding one of the, the entrances now, you're still in low-earth orbit, so it's not like they immediately get spaced. But there is still that sudden change in pressure, and air starts whistling out of here. Everybody's ears pop again, except phase. Optimised for such things. Um, <laughs> the sirens start again. <laughs> and again, you see that the, the few humans among the guards, they have a, a moment or two of panic before again it's like a switch is flipped in them. And they go back to this very robotic kind of... Um, and then the squads of guards, half of them go over to the, the where the explosion was to look around. The other half start moving down to where's, where this tank is because it, it's, it's, it's not the most obvious, but they can at least kind of go, well, it has to have been shot from somewhere in the back half of the cargo bay. And there are guards that are close to you that were at the the back end effectively because you're about two thirds of the way along that are also starting to move in trying to find out what's going on at the moment you are all still hidden away behind crates and boxes and ordnance and things so you do have a bit of respite but they are starting to converge on this tank yeah so i'll set uh fey.exe to run the tank toward the hole and just try to ramp people out of it while fey prime exits the tank and uh hides with the rest of the team <laughs> Can we uh, take advantage of the chaos to uh, approach our our mechs crates? Yeah, I would like a mobility stealth test from all of you. You can all do this at advantage while Fey.exe is basically gunning this tank. As the tank is moving towards the hull, uh, you hear over your comms, because somehow Fey.exe has patched into all of your frequencies, Sammy, mm -hmm. what gleeful things or battle cries or, or explanations is Fey.exe saying as they turn their guns on their own side as they're making their way to the tank. Because they have anti-personnel, you know, machine guns and things built onto these tanks as well. Oh, jeez. What is coming over your airwaves? Well, oh. Fey isn't one, one for both. They don't have a war cry per se, but Fey.exe, as they are gunning down their former allies, is just on the comms. You shouldn't have left me behind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, mobility stealth test from everyone, please, at advantage. Well, that's a 14. And that's a 1. Oh, good, thankfully. <laughs> Just shadow. You turn, you look, Rook's no longer there. I got a 13 and a 5. My mobility is 9. And it's a 5 for me. I got 6 at 8, so... <laughs> Oh, scraped it. Oh. Uh, For the first time what? ever, Nox is quiet as <laughs> they make their way to the, <laughs> to the mech and doesn't engage in combat immediately. And uh, Rook got a crit. And I think what that crit is, because I, I play crits as effectively triumphs. So not only do you succeed, and not only do you get the, for combat, the mechanical effect of double damage, you also get an additional cherry on top because... They're cool, in the same way that if you roll a natural 20, you know, prepare for the pain to be brought. And I think if, Chris, you'll permit me for stealing your natural wand to explain this. Sure! I think that between Fey.exe going hog wild, the troops that are down here have not noticed as your mecha unbox. <laughs> so I don't think they've noticed as your, as your mecha effectively unbox themselves and stand up. 
Now this is not going to be the point that you describe your mecha. That will come at the start of the next episode because it's still very very dark in here. I think what happens is we have a quick montage in the pitch darkness of here lit only by gunfire going off as these crates open up and all we can see are these indistinct vaguely humanoid gigantic shapes all of them big huge mind-blowingly big but the one that knocks heads to even bigger than the rest this great hulking terrifyingly sized shadow we see the silhouettes of our pilots get into these mecha we see the doors closest to them open up revealing below the landscape passing so far below that the people and the cars and the vehicles are effectively ants and then one by one our mecha jump out of these doors and begin free falling towards the land and their next objective and that is where we're going to end it for this episode <laughs> coming next episode of the mecha hack mecha <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much to my players. I hope that you've had fun so far, and I hope you're looking forward to what's oh, coming Oh, this is next. amazing. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, we definitely did the hack part. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much to our listeners so far. We hope you are having fun, and we will see you all next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Edge Studios. Our intro music is by the amazing Sly Fox Audio. Check out more of her work at soundcloud.com slash slyfoxaudio. Our outro music is Suburban Outlaw instrumental version by Forget the Whale. Use with gratitude under a Creative Commons license. Many of the sound effects and soundscapes are created using Sirenscape because epic games need epic sounds. If you're enjoying the show and want to support us, there are three ways you can do that. The first is by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod, where for as little as $1 a month you get access to outtakes, adverts, various other stuff, and my fortnightly ramblings. You can drop us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash forcemajeurepod, or you can leave us a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to interact with us, there's a few ways you can do that. We are on the social medias, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as at Force Monsieur Pod. And we're over on Mastodon as at Force Monsieur Pod at Dice.camp. You can also join our Discord, link in the show notes. Thank you very much for listening and being with us as we tell these stories. We hope you are having fun and we will see you next time. <laughs>